All right. Well, welcome to Parenting in Unity. This is our second call in the series of Parenting in Unity. Uh, you know, obviously, I got my sidekick not here tonight, uh, but he he's a little bit under the weather, but he does send his love and he is praying for us right now. You know, uh, if you weren't able to watch last week's recording, I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel. You can just go to YouTube and then that forward slash married for a purpose. You'll be able to find our YouTube channel there. Uh, you'll also see a playlist uh, or video series called Parenting in Unity. So all the recordings are being uh, uploaded to that account so that you can watch them, you can re-watch them, you can forward them on to other folks that you know that might be struggling. I am making sure that the only part that's being shared on there is just the recording of what we're teaching. So it won't be anything as far as Q&A. Uh, there's a lot of gold in the Q&A, but you got to join live to get a part of that. So uh, if you didn't watch last week's or you weren't able to be a part and you're joining this week, by all means, visit the YouTube channel and you can find that information there. Um, for tonight, tonight I'm excited because one of the foundations that I think Greg and I, honestly, we kind of stumbled upon by chance. I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit and his grace because for me, growing up in a family where every abuse was present, I have to tell you, this pr principle wasn't necessarily one that I learned. Um, it was one that was given to me. And I do think it's one of those heavenly principles that you're going to be able to, no matter what season of life you're in, it's never too late. It's never too early to instill this value. So the value we're talking about, the principle that we're talking about tonight is parenting in unity by instilling, uh, hang on, I'm letting people in here, by instilling family pride. So if you're taking notes, the thing that you want to write down is be intentional to instill family pride. And again, I know a lot of us are at different junctures of life. Uh, some of us have really small kids and it's a busy season. Some of us have teenagers and we're helping them transition from that, that young, uh, maybe middle school into the teenage years. And then others of us are actually in that transition part of parenting adult children. So no matter where you're at, again, it's never too early. It's never too late to instill family values of pride. So. For me, most of you know my upbringing again, every abuse was present. Uh, that's why I say we stumbled upon this principle because I knew what I didn't want, but I didn't necessarily know what I did want. And so part of instilling family pride is identifying what it is that you actually want. We're going to give you some assignments at the end of this uh, to, um, uh, to apply to your marriage relationship, again, based off of the area of life that you're in. But for me, one of the things that I did is I began to identify what I wanted. Greg and I began to identify what we wanted. And one of the things that we wanted is we wanted unity. Uh, we wanted our kids to feel loved, accepted, valued, um, that our home would be a home of laughter and a home of respect. So again, you know, taking it from a very high level, we simply identified what's important to us. What do we want for our family? What do we want our family to be remembered as? Uh, we do a thing in the reboot is like, you know, at, at the end of life, how do you want to be remembered? And so we kind of did that exercise as a family. How do we want our family to be remembered? What do we want to be known as? And we wanted to be known as a family of love. We wanted to be known as a family of respect. We wanted uh, our family, every family member to feel accepted, to feel like they belonged, and to also be a loyal family. So some of our core fa uh, core values were acceptance, belonging, loyalty. I knew for me, I never wanted my kids to ever question whether they were loved. So even in their discipline, and even part of when they were in arguments with one another, we always instilled, look, we're Gormans, and we love one another. We're Gormans and we respect one another. We use those that words, those words in that language. So as a family, much like we built our marriage on the foundations that uh, every marriage exists to make God known, bring God pleasure, and demonstrate his unconditional love, we carried those same principles into our family pride. We would be a family that made God known in our actions with one another and in our actions in society. 
we would uh, live in such a way to bring God pleasure. And so our very life, we understood and we taught our kids that their their purpose in life wasn't something that they did. In essence, their purpose, their purpose was a celebration of who they are. And then the third principle that is also adopted into our marriage relationship is that our marriage exists to be an earthly example of representing God's unconditional love. And we instilled that in our kids as well, that in our family, no matter our arguments, no matter our disagreements, no matter our differences in our personalities, our wants, our wishes, our desires, all of those things, we would always demonstrate unconditional love. And so if we were in disagreement, we came back to those singular principles. We also adopted, for those of you that have been around for a while, we adopted the three core principles of see the best, believe the best, and speak the best. If you came to my home, on my refrigerator to this day is this little magnet that I had made up, I think by Shutterfly or something like that, I can't remember. And it had a bunch of little family pictures and it said, see the best, believe the best, speak the best. Family is forever. And so what does it look like to see the best? You know, when we're talking about instilling family pride, we chose, and one of the principles that helped us to adopt that uh, family pride was to see the best in one another. So we weren't looking for opportunities to take offense. We weren't looking for opportunities to see one another's shortcomings. Instead, we were looking for the things that we could celebrate. We were looking for things that were worthy of praise. We would, uh, if something happened, we, we looked to see the intentionality behind the actions. So if somebody was off, acting a little bit off their square, we didn't immediately think, well, you jerk. Boy, they're sure selfish. Uh, instead, we began to really think, huh, well, that's not like them. And we began to see the best in them, that there must be something going on, which goes to that second principle of believing the best. You know, sometimes if you're really looking for something that's good and the person's been uncharacteristically off their square for a while, it's easy to begin to get stinking thinking. So we disciplined our mind and we we taught our kids to believe the best about one another. So if they were in an argument, we would go to, well, first of all, why are you talking to us about it? You need to go to them because we're Gormans. We stick together. We see the best. We believe the best. We speak the best. So why don't you go to your brother? Why don't you go to your sister? Why don't you go to one another and find out what's going on? And rather than assuming the worst about or the intentions that were bad, why not choose to believe that they couldn't possibly have meant what they said the way that they said it with ill intention and go to them and just say, hey, you know what? I love you. I respect you. You kind of hurt my feelings and I need to understand what's going on rather than assuming what's going on. Now, that's a lot easier. Um, maybe if you've always instilled that practice, it might be a little awkward, uh, but it's never too late to go back and say, you know, I'm learning some things. And the first place that we model out these principles is with our spouse. And your kids are going to catch who you are. They're going to catch your values, not what you say, but they're going to see what you do and they're going to model it. So a lot of times in conferences, we'll say, hey, everybody hold up your hand, make the little OK sign. And you guys can follow along. Why, why don't you guys just do that? Go ahead and make a little OK sign. And when I say three, I'm going to count to three. And I just want you to put this on your cheek. Okay. So one, two, three. All right. Some of you have been around for a while. Where's your hand? Is it on your chin or your cheek? I said to put it on your cheek, but most of you, even if you, man, it took me forever. Greg would do this at conferences and I would go like this, you know, because I, I would model what I saw. And the same thing happens with our kids. They model what they see us do. And that's kind of scary because again, in the family, we understand that the four walls, man, that's where we are the clearest of who we really are. Uh, it's the clearest indication of our heart's condition. Our relationship with God is unfolded in the four walls of our home. And so for me, there have been seasons where I wasn't quite myself. And my kids, I might've been telling them to put their finger on their cheek, but I was doing one of these things. And I had to go back to them and ask them for forgiveness. If you can follow the analogy, you know, I was expecting something from them that I wasn't actually living out. 
And so it's really important to model out these characteristics and it's never too late to do that. So going back to where I started, you may have been, maybe you've never had these principles. Maybe you've never instilled family pride. And maybe your kids are 30 or 40 or 50 years old. I have no idea where you're at. Maybe they're teenagers. It's never too late to say, you know, I'm really trying to grow. I'm really trying to learn. And there isn't anything more important to me than to be a good parent to you and a good spouse to your dad or your mom. And being able to say those things and say, you know, so one of the things I'm really trying to do, and I give you permission to hold me accountable to it, uh, is that I want this for our family. I want our, ki our I want our family to be. And then whatever core values you're, you're landed on that are important to you, uh, it may be communicating to them, you know, man, I was really hard on you as a kid. I wish I could go back and let you know how much you really do belong, how, how fantastic of a kid you actually are, um, that you're accepted, that you're valued. Whatever those principles are that you wish you would have, it's never too late to go back and actually say those things. And if you got little ones, it's never too late to use that language. Um, we would do things like we're Gormans. Man, you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Uh, we're family. Family sticks together. Family's forever. And we used to do this thing where the kids would be fighting and we'd say, uh, we'd make them hold hands. And it, some of you have heard this analogy, but they were fighting like cats and dogs, man. I'd say, get in here, get in here. This is not who we are. This is not how we handle conflict. It's not how we do life. We're Gormans. And so I'd make them hold hands and they'd have their little hands. You know, they were itty bitty when we were doing this. They were holding hands and and Josh would have to say to Summer, you are my sister. And Summer would say, you are my brother. And they take turns going back and forth saying, other friends may come and go, but family is forever. Now I have to tell you, there were times where they were so mad at me. They'd be rolling their eyes. They'd be frustrated. But by the end of that little exercise, they would either be so mad at me that at least they were unified or they would be giggling and laughing because they realized they'd been stupid about whatever it was that they were fighting about. Because why? We were instilling that family is forever. We may not always see uh, eye to eye on certain things. We may have a lot of disagreements. Uh, we may have different wishes and wants and desires and all those things. But one thing is, I want you to know I got your back. And so when we come to these principles of seeing the best, and believing the best, when people are acting unbecoming, we choose to not be offended. We choose to see the best in them, look for what's right, not what's wrong, look for what we love, not what's lacking. We look to believe the best in them, even when maybe they don't believe the best about them. And then that brings us to that third principle of speaking the best. So we see the best, we believe the best, and then because we do truly in our heart believe the best about them, we're able to speak over them, their identity. And here's the truth. Anytime that uh, what we're finding, thinking, or speaking is contrary to how God would see, believe, or speak over us, we're in alignment with the enemy. And so the way that we instilled family pride is we aligned our own hearts and minds up with Christ Jesus, with the Father what the Holy Spirit would speak over our brothers or our parents. And we began to speak those things. And if we spoke out of turn, we were quick to ask for forgiveness. Um, we didn't do it right all the time. So there was a lot of need for extending of forgiveness, both from parent to child and child to parent. Um, but we did truly try to implement these principles and believe and speak and see the best over one another. So again, uh, coming back to you, what is it, as I've shared some of our values of wanting to uh, make sure that our kids know that they belong, that they're accepted, that they're valued, that they're loved unconditionally, that we would be a family of respect. Uh, man, we've had some blowups, guys. There were times where, uh, you know, if you came to our home, if you saw a snapshot, you'd be like, whoo. But even in that, you know, we had some um, unprogramming or deprogramming we had to do just from our own childhood. Uh, we were yellers <laughs> uh, at the at the very beginning. And I remember one time, actually, I was the one who screamed the most, if you can believe it, early on. And I remember Greg saying to me, he says, I don't want that for our family. I know I do it and I know you're doing it, but it's just causing our kids to come unnerved. 
And man, from the moment he said it, I, I can tell you there were only, I don't know, by the grace of God, the day that he told me, I don't want my kids to see us yelling at them. Something really resonated in me. And maybe it was I remembering just how I felt as a kid. And I chose, it's like, okay, I don't want that. So how does that deal with family pride? It's, you know, sometimes we have to deprogram ourselves from what was, ask for forgiveness of what we don't want in our family. And sometimes you have to do that two or three times or more, <laughs> but it's uh, instilling the intentionality of who we are, how we want to be known and what our intentions are in both our parenting and then for them. So as I shared our values, I'd love for you to begin to even now, if there's a a value that's really important, no matter what stage of life you're at, just begin to write down those values. Maybe you want a home. I wanted our kids to feel secure. I want them to, I, I desperately wanted them to feel loved, right? Greg wanted them to be prepared um, to feel like they could excel in there. So we began to try to instill those values. All right. Um, one of the things when we talked about speaking the best, let's come back to that one. One of the things that we did is like, we would say, you've totally got this. Uh, in this season, I can tell you, my kids are making decisions I don't want them to make. They're talking about moving about 15 states away from me. You know, it's like, it's like, no, don't want that. But I have to step back from what my wants and wishes are to say and to communicate. I love you and I'm going to hate that you're gone, but I know you can figure this out. You've got this. As long as you're praying, as long as you're seeking God, I'm going to support your decisions. And if you find out that this was a wrong decision, it's never too late to turn around. I don't want them to dig their heels in to feel like they have to prove themselves to me. Why? Because they're accepted. They're loved. They're valued. I'm going to prefer their needs over my own. Uh, I was telling you about early on some of the things that we did for Family Pride. We'd say we're Gormans. We got one another's backs. Uh, we said that, that slogan of other friends may come and go, but man, family is forever. Today, if you said other friends may come and go, they'd immediately all chime in, but family is forever. It's kind of cool. Uh, we would communicate, we're one. Man, I got your back. Other people may let you down, but I'm not going to. And if I do, let me know because I want to be the first one to apologize. So we we adopted forgiveness we adopted choosing to not be offended we adopted the value of no drama zone right so even now today when things can kind of get a little heightened or we get off kilter or it's like I come back to that principle to govern myself it's like I refuse drama I refuse to be offended I refuse to not see believe and speak the best so when my heart's in turmoil or disappointed um, and sometimes my kids have let me down their actions. You know, I, I had this idea that if I would just be a perfect enough parent, I could spare them from pain. And that's just not a reality. You know, God's a perfect father. Man, he's a perfect father. And I know I still made some choices that caused his heart pain. And so in all of that, I give myself that same value of love, acceptance, forgiveness, um, I choose to remember that their life is actually theirs. I can I can try to govern and I can try to parent and I can lay out the very best possibilities for them and they're still independent beings. So in this family pride, I want to create an atmosphere that they know that they're safe and that they are loved and that they are uh, they are accepted, that they that we are truly one, that I got their back and I'm not going to let them down. In Matthew 12, I love how Jesus shared. He said, a house divided will not stand. So that principle to fight for unity above all else, as it pertains to this marriage relationship, you've heard us teach this, also applies to our kids. Today, we fight for unity above all else. So we're looking for that merging of where what they want and what we want intersect. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that we compromise our values. I'm not saying we compromise the word of God. What I am saying is we lead with love and we look for any possible way to build on common ground. So in all of that, 
I think that the thing is really powerful as a parent, your kids long to belong. Family pride gives them that place where they know that they're loved, accepted, and valued. Everybody desires to be part of something bigger than themselves. And so we, we've talked about the principles of one can put a, a thousand to flight, two, 10,000. And, and we used to make this joke, man, what could the five of us accomplish together? Because there's five in our family. And each time that we bring in another a person into our family, we're really intentional about telling them how important family is to us. Uh, we talk about no drama zones. We begin to share those values with people who are adults that probably didn't necessarily come from the fam same family background that we tried to instill for our kids. And in all of it, we're looking for the opportunity to merge the world, to uh, merge all of our worlds to make sure that every addition that's being brought into our family knows that they're loved, they're accepted, they're valued. So we take pride in supporting, uh, you know, something like that's bigger than us. And so the more that you can create an idea, a value, an image of what you want your family to look like, the more your kids can actually see that image. And then they can govern themselves to like, am I living into that? We would ask a lot of questions. It's like, this is what's important to us. What do you think? Do you think it's important to have your sister's back? Do you think it's important for them to have your back? So it wasn't just us trying to push our values on them we tried to see what their their value system was and why they might think it would be important and what was great is as we did that we had some really great family conversations of what do you think it's important what makes a healthy family and we let them tell us our very values well I think it's important to feel respected I think it's important to feel heard I think it's important if somebody has a difference of opinions now they might have been doing that to make their point to us that they wanted us to hear what it was that they were saying but what was great is the very thing that they said was important we were able to come back and say you know when we were talking one of the things you said was important was and we would use that core value and then we would ask, how is your action right now with your brother or your sister? How's that playing out? Is that pushing you closer to that? Or do you think there might be something you need to do a heart check with? And it wasn't a judgment. It wasn't an, aren't you a bad person? It was like, look, this is, if this is important, we got to really work hard in this. We did that from the time they were itty bitty throughout their teenage years. And now even more so, I think we're, we're making sure that those values are in place as we transition them and they're beginning their own families. So family pride, you know, one of the things that as we observed uh, some of the most successful families, and I just wrote this down, we found they have something in common. These tight knit families leverage unity and protection in their home. So again, that principle to fight for unity your kids may be really fighting uh, for their independence. Uh, I've had some friends over the years uh, feel very disrespected by their kids. And so rather than fighting for their rights, they would come back to principles and values that they said was important. And rather than tell their kids um, how their kids should be doing that for them, they modeled it out with one another. And then they ask one another. So one of the questions, for example, I'm asking my kids right now, um, as they're declaring their independence is how can I best support you? Why am I doing that? Because I've got, I, guys, I've got my own wants and wishes and I can't change that. But even more than my own preferences, I want unity. Above my own preferences, I want them to know that they're loved, accepted, and valued. So I come back to those core principles that are so core inside me that I, I desperately want. And I want that more than I want them living next door. Are you following me? So it's the preferences that come into alignment. It's not the core values that are being compromised. So if core values are being compromised, then there might be some you know things that we have to put in place for healthy boundaries. But, but the more that we can prefer one another's needs over our own, as long as we're not compromising our core values, that's where we begin to instill family pride. We begin to uh, keep an open door to be able to have dialogue together, even when our preferences are different. 
Um, I think I shared some of the other ones, but in case I didn't, we would share things like we're Gormans. If you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. It was almost like this band of brothers, almost like a military unit. We were going to operate cohesively. And man, you know, I, we've got some military guys on here. They could speak to it a whole lot more to me. Chris is putting his thumb up. You can't see it, but you know, we've got some military guys. And I bet there are some times where there's the guy that you're fighting next to, you may not like him very well. He may have different values than you have. He might have different preferences. And, and uh, again, you could be, maybe you're a, a female and you're military. The point being is when you go to war, you forget all those things and you bond together and the mission is the most important. And so that brother or that sister, you lock arms. And that's what I'm talking about for the family. There may be some things that you don't necessarily, but when you can communicate, I've got your back. I'm for you. We're Gormans or your last name. Other friends may come and go, but families forever. We let them know. We let our kids know, even to this day, that we're going to protect them at all costs. We're going to defend them at all costs. And so when we would make decisions, because those were that was family pride, man, we're Gormans. Get this. Other friends may come and go. That was really real. A lot of real conversations were going around that. So when we had promised them we're going to protect them and defend them at all costs. If we made a decision, even if they didn't like it, uh, there were times that their friends would say, wow, your parents are a real killjoy, or they, they would talk against us. Our kids, because we'd had those kinds of conversations, would say, you know, I really wish I could do that, but I know that my parents are doing this because they love me. We would do some things uh, because they knew they were loved, accepted, and valued. We'd say, look, we may be getting this all wrong, but our heart's intent is to protect you. And so this is why we're saying no to this. And even though you may not understand it, please know that our heart behind it is to protect you above all other things. They knew that we had their back. They knew that we wanted them to redline on fun. We knew that uh, they knew that um, we, we wanted them to be successful and loved and all of those things. So here's the point, guys, that the family pride really comes down to operating as a single unit. And beginning to instill those core values with your kids. So I'm going to give you some assignments that I want you to think through. So if you've got a pen and paper, right now I'd, I'd encourage you to write this down. Decide how you can create an environment that reminds everyone in the family we're one. Like our rules or truths of see the best, believe the best, speak the best. What kind of rules or takeaways can you put in place to create the environment that's most important to you? What are some ways? Number two, what are some ways that you can instill family pride? Some people have actually created crests. And they, they put their name, you know, I've seen them where they put their name and they put their core values all the way around the crest. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, others have actually created a singular purpose statement for their family. Our family exists to restore God's intent for the family. Now, our kids are not in ministry with us. They're not, um, our oldest daughter actually does our social media. She does a great job. Um, and so her, she has put her skills into place to restore God's intent for the family. But the way that our family, they know that we exist to restore God's intent. And so a big part of that really begins, whether they ever do a formal ministry or not, is how we interact as a family unit, because we're restoring God's intent just by how we do life together. There were so many times it was kind of scary, I have to tell you. We would be in Walmart or we'd be going through Publix or Winn-Dixie. Those are our shopping centers around here. And so people go, do you go to Christ Fellowship? And we're like, yeah, we do. I was like, oh, I love sitting behind you in church. I have to tell you. And they would start crying. They would say, we love how you guys interact as a family. You guys are always so affectionate. Uh, we love how your kids lay their heads on, on your shoulder during church. You know, those kinds of things, we would share that with our kids and we'd say right there, 
you're instilling hope in other families because they don't have it. Uh, that created, again, a sense of family pride. So for you, um, is there a singular vision or mission that you can adopt as a family? And if so, what does that look like? Uh, we also found that our unity happened through open dialogue, honest commu communication, and intentionally sharing concepts over and over. So if you would have a recurring dialogue with your kids, what are some of the things that you need to maybe say to them? It may be that you've made some mistakes. Maybe you, you didn't instill these. And so it's kind of like where we, we began. If you've made some mistakes, is there somewhere you need to go to your kids and say, you know, honestly, I didn't even know that I needed to do this. Or this is one of the things that I'm learning that, man, I wish I could have given you. I know for our eldest daughter, and maybe you guys don't know this, um, our eldest is actually from Greg's first marriage. Uh, and there were times that because she was declaring her independence, I pulled away, allowing her to do that. Um, she wasn't necessarily a huggy, kissy kind of, you know, cuddly kind of girl. And I, I tell her all the times, like, baby girl, and man, if I could go back, I'd pull you in and kiss your face all over the place just to let you know how much I loved you. I wish I could go back and do that. And, and Courtney's been so gracious. She, and she calls me mom today, which is really cool. And she said, mom, all I see is a gracious, loving woman. She speaks so lovingly over me. She's allowed me to coach her. But there was a time where I just went back and said, man, I didn't know what I was doing. I made a lot of mistakes. And if I could, I would. And so those kinds of conversations, they may be accepting of that, or there may have been some really hard hardships. Again, it's speaking the intent and letting the results take care of themselves, continuing to do the right thing, model out those right things. But maybe there's some mistakes you've made and you need to go to your kids and ask them for forgiveness. You might even ask, depending again, uh, your relationship with your kids, but how, how do they think? you can actually create more unity in the family. Kind of like coming back to what I'm asking my kids right now, because everything they're doing right now is contrary to what I thought family would look like. I thought it was going to be every Sunday they come over for lunch. You know, it's like probably a little white picket fence, quite honestly. And so as they're moving and moving away and they're doing different things, I have to pull back from my wants and wishes and just say, how can I support you? right now. It's a hard thing to do. It really is. And so uh, maybe have that conversation with them of, hey guys, how do you guys think, what, what could we do that would cause some fun and connection? When you're doing holidays, what does that look like for them? Maybe they have their own families. What's important to them? Uh, it might be, hey, how can I be a better mom or dad and make you feel supported? I, my, my heart is to to let you know that you're that you're loved, accepted, valued, and supported. What does that look like? And now they might go, oh, no. uh, it's okay. Keep asking. Keep keep watching what works and what doesn't work, and keep sp expressing the intent of, man, I love you, man. I always want to support you. I always want you to know that you belong. And um, finally, the last part. And I'm going to go to the phone lines, uh, the open it up for Q&A. Would love to hear your best practices. Uh, it's always good to have best practices shared by the group. Maybe some things that you've learned along the way or some questions that you might have. If I can't answer them because the real, the real genius isn't with me tonight, we got a lot of geniuses on here that can give maybe a guy or a dad's perspective as well. But uh, the other thing that would be a great assignment to begin to do, no matter where you're at in your parenting journey, is to create core values that you're going to up, up, um, uphold and live out. Making sure that you honor your kids' core values as well. But uh, in the next sessions, we're going to share you know, some of our family mottos and mantras and things like that. Uh, we're going to dive into core values and understanding those core values. But right now, what are some of those core values, like I shared at the beginning, that you want to make sure you model out? List those things out and begin to look for opportunities to communicate them.